Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're answering another common question that viewers ask, uh, why the heck are there clocks on the superstructures of some battleships? So, uh, today's episode is about range clocks. First important note, uh, I don't believe any museum ship has a range clock on it. There's nowhere in the world you can go to see one live. But if you're looking at pictures of ships, uh, most commonly here in the United States, the Pearl Harbor battleships, although most navies use something similar, uh, you will see a big round clock face mounted just below the fire control tower on the tripod masts, both forward and aft. Uh, we've all built the Ravel Arizona kit, and that comes with uh, those clocks on there as well. So why was it so important that they be able to tell the time? I've heard it theorized that oh, they didn't carry wristwatches back then, so they needed a clock so they knew when watches changed. No, 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 no. Uh, you don't use the clocks to tell time, you use the, the bells like a cuckoo clock. So that's not it. The range clock doesn't even count up to 12 on its dial, it counts up to 10. So, what is it for? Uh, in the age before radar, ships fought in line of battle. So we're talking primarily the interwar period when this would have been mounted. Uh, accuracy with battleship guns as they got larger and were able to fire further uh, was abysmally poor. So, uh, they wanted a way so that when one ship, purely by luck or accident, finds the range to a target, they can transmit that through the whole battle line. Because odds are, the enemy fleet is all at one range, you're all at one range, you're sailing broadside in a line of battle. So, uh, the range clock has two hands, like a, a minute hand and an hour hand, and those two hands are to tell you how many thousands of yards away you're aiming, and then how many hundreds of yards away you are for the, for the minute hand. So now all these ships in line of battle, you can look right behind you at the ship back there at their range clock and see where that is aiming, and that tells you what range they have found. In our video on battleship shells, we've talked about how all the ships uh, had different colored shells so that you could tell which splashes were from which ships. Uh, so you see the blue splashes hitting a target. That means New Jersey has found the range. Everybody looks at her range clock to see what range she's aiming at and adjusts their aim accordingly. Similarly, during this time period, we're talking about the 1920s and early 30s, they also painted bearing indicators on all the turrets. So American battleships during that period are all painted this, this almost white haze gray color and then the sides of their turret are this almost black color with white hash marks on it, so you can see what bearing the target is. So you can see how much deflection, how much uh, the battleship that's actually scoring hits is leading its target. And you can do all of this uh, without transmitting it over radio. Uh, radio transmissions signal to everybody where you are. It seems kind of weird because if you have engaged an enemy fleet, that's oh, all they know where you are. Uh, but now, without radio transmission, uh, boom, the whole battle line knows who's hitting the target and what they're aiming with. Pretty early on in World War II, the combination of factors led to the deletion of range clocks. Uh, so one factor is, you know, we, we don't have enough battleships in this post-treaty world to do traditional line of battle warfare. Uh, so that, that just isn't happening anymore. The most battleships I can think of ever engaging another surface fleet during World War II was six of them. Uh, so significantly less than the several dozen that uh, engage each other at Jutland. Also, you've got radar, and radar is telling you very precisely the range to target. And more importantly, you've got what's called TBS, talk between ship uh, radio communications. So you can uh, get on a super high frequency radio that is super short distance and transmit just to the ships around you in voice. So you don't need to worry about the enemy hearing it, even though they're only 20 miles away, uh, it just goes between the individual ships there within a, a couple of miles. So th all of these factors, which came around right at the beginning of World War II, mean that 
we don't need this anymore. Range clocks are utterly obsolete. Believe it or not, Iowa-class battleships, despite being modern and a wartime construction, were originally designed with range clocks. If you look at the designer's model of these ships, you'll see a number of archaic features. Some of them call back to earlier battleship classes, and uh, many of them were not incorporated in the final design. So for example, where the amidships 40 millimeter gun position is, that, that three-tiered anti-aircraft position, there was originally a crane and uh, series of boats, which slightly older battleships like North Carolina did have installed as built. Uh, there was a cutout along the side of the ship, much like we pointed out on Battleship Massachusetts, which was fared smooth on the Iowa class in the final design. And there were navigation radars on the forward superstructure and on top of turret three in the position which was uh, eventually taken over by a 40 millimeter gun mount. Uh, but of course, there was a range clock in this model uh, and unfortunately, there aren't any really good pictures where you can see it, but take my word for it, the range clock would have been just above the 08 bridge, below where those view slits are on the 09 level, uh, where you would spot the fall of shot, the lookout position there. So you can see behind me here, the 08 bridge, uh, it's got a frame around it for a canvas cover. Just over top of that would have been the forward range clock. Uh, and I assume there would have been a range clock mounted on the aft rangefinder as well. Uh, again, these are all archaic features. I don't believe any of the American fast battleships were fitted with them. And pretty early on in World War II, they're removed, from American ships at least. Uh, French battleships tended to carry them throughout France's whole active participation in the war. Uh, the British tripod battleships mostly had them deleted at the beginning of the war, and their modern battleships were not equipped with them. Um, I don't believe Japanese or German battleships ever had them, but American battleships, of course, did. Thanks for watching. What's another piece of battleship technology uh, you'd like to hear us talk about in the future, because you have questions about it or we haven't covered it yet? Let us know in the comments section down below. If you would like to see that uh, covered sooner, there's a link in the description where you can make a donation to the channel and we'll bump it up. This range clock episode is one we've wanted to make for about six months, uh, but it keeps getting bumped down the list. So if you've got a topic you really want to see us talk about, uh, shoot us a donation and we can, and we can uh, work with you on that. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of businesses and private viewers like yourselves. In particular, the support you guys have given this channel has been tremendous and it lets us make videos like these. There's a link in the description if you'd like to continue supporting us. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people hear about our videos. Thanks for watching.